So, you want to get a stronger and more technically efficient squat. Well, keep tuned, because in today's video, we're going to go through five mistakes people make when trying to get a stronger squat. Stay tuned, guys, because number four and five are personally my favorite. So, let's start from first things first. You're up into the rack, and you're wanting to do a brilliant squat. You want to make sure your confidence and your technique is good. So, number one, we're going to go with bar positioning and tightness. I've put these two together because they coincide beautifully. When you get your positioning correct, you can get your tightness correct too. What I mean by that is not having the bar on your neck, having the bar on the meaty part of your back, so your traps. What we essentially want is a, a stable and strong shelf for that bar to sit on. When we found this point, then we can go ahead and tighten that setup. So what I'd recommend to get your bar position on your traps is wedge yourself into the bar. And this can be done by pushing the ground when you're digging yourself in the bar and trying to push that bar further down your traps like shown. When you've got that down to a T, tightness is so much easier. When we think tightness, I want you to think about drawing your shoulder blades together and contracting your lats. These are pivotal roles, even in bench press, even deadlifts and squats as well. The reason why they're so important is because they help us anchor that bar down into our back. If you watch any videos of like gym fails, you might see the bar rolling on the upper back. If this is you and the bar travels a lot when you're trying to squat, maybe you benefit from having a tighter setup. So what I want you to think about is number one, drawing your armpits together. That essentially creates a much more stable base, stable platform and like I'm gonna go through soon, rigidity breeds strength. And if your upper back is tight, it can make you have a stronger and efficient setup as well. Mistake number two is the walkout. And let me explain what this is. The walkout is when you lock your knees from the rack and you're simply walking out to your starting position. So many times I see people take about 100 million steps and all you're doing in this time is just leaking power. One of the greatest things that I've learned personally from my squat is from the greatest powerlifter of all time, Ed Cohen. He's a great advocate of minimizing steps and removing as many variables as you can. And the only thing that should change really is the weight on the bar. Everything else stays the same. The positioning, the grip, the foot positioning, every single small detail has to be broken down and kept the same. Personally, if you do this, this will help transform your squat. Try it on your next squat day. Try it on your next leg day. Try and just keep every single set the same. And it might feel cleaner, it might feel more efficient, and that's already a good start and a good path to a stronger squat. So what I'd recommend for the walkout is no more than four steps. So imagine yourself locking the bar out with your knees, one step, two steps, set. Sometimes four, if you wanna reposition your foot or give it a little wiggle into the floor. Think about the confidence as well. If you have a sturdy setup, if you have a sturdy walkout, that creates confidence, that creates tightness, and that creates a nice braced body as well to squat from. If you're still watching, by the way, and you haven't yet subscribed, click that bell and keep watching, stop rolling. Number three, I've got a bottle to explain this. It's breathing and bracing at the same time. You see, the reason why I'm showing you a bottle, I'm not crazy, is because when we want to brace efficiently, we've got to imagine ourselves as a plastic bottle or a can. If we have no air and if we're just left to... Just, that's what happens when essentially we're not braced and there's no intra-abdominal pressure, IAP. What I mean by that is your whole entire trunk here. I want you to imagine filling that with air and creating as much pressure as you can. If you're needing the toilet, or if you're needing to fart, by the way, then I'd recommend against trying this in the next few seconds. But what I want to do is, I want to imagine taking a deep breath in, tighten up that midsection, and push your belly out, as if you were on the toilet squeezing out a sh When we do that, notice the bottle is much more harder to maneuver, and it's a lot tighter and a lot more strong. Bracing creates rigidity. Rigidity breeds strength. A good way to practice bracing properly or breathing is simply lie on the floor, placing the heavy dumbbell, kettlebell, or plate on your abdomen and trying to push that kettlebell or dumbbell or that weight to the ceiling just by using your intra abdominal muscles and create as much pressure as you can whilst still breathing as well. Should you practice this, this can carry over beautifully to points two and one. Breathing is a is a pivotal part to creating strength in the squat and especially coming down you want to hold that breath creating as much tightness and tension as you can delivering a better squat much more confidence as well. Breathing and bracing has so many components to it I'm going to leave that for its own separate video but when you breathe and brace the effect this can have on any lift can be really bloody good. Mistake number four I see people make is the stripper squat. 
So what I mean by this is your hips rising far too early in the squat, your chest dipping forwards, and there's a leak in core strength and tension. So what happens when you do this, or the most likely cause of this, is driving too much with the heels and not enough from the whole tripod of the foot. Imagine three points in your foot. One is your heel and two is either end of the top of your foot. When we push equally between these three points, that enables much more stability, much more control, and equal push and power as well. If you're already doing this, that might be a weakness in the upper back or the back itself, and the legs are just trying to take over and trying to push that weight up by themselves. If this is you and that is the case, a cue I love to use for this is chest up when you're coming up from that squat. Imagine someone just literally grabbing the scruff of your neck and ripping it up as well when you're coming up. We extra every time. I use this in training. I use this in my top set or top lift in competitions. It's worked quite well for me so far. So try it out and see what you think. So point number five, this can be where people get real buttered because it's something that we like to get right. And if it's not, then it can cost you, if you're powerlifting, it can cost you red lights. If you're in the gym, it can cost you a false sense of security or a false sense of hope that you're progressing in the right direction. And it's depth. Depth can be factored by so many things. And what is depth? How do you know if you've hit depth? Well, depth is, statistically speaking, where your hip, the crease of the hip, comes to the top of the knee or below. So if you're a powerlifter and you struggle to hit depth, then I'd really listen up and take note. Depth can be factored by fear, lack of confidence, mobility, flexibility, strength issue, an ego issue, or simply it's just too heavy for that movement. If that is the case for you, if you're lacking mobility, for example, I have got a free PDF. It's in the description. Be sure to download that. It's free. If it's a fear issue, one exercise you can do to A, lighten the load and B, have a physical cue or where your depth is, is do something called pin squats or Anderson squats. This is where you set the pins in the gym squat rack to where your depth is. And simply the worst case scenario is you come to the bottom, you rest the, the bar on the pins and you can't come back up and you just exit the squat. However, doing tempo squats and pause squats can really help with this issue because you're forced to lighten the load, really work on where you are every single bit of that squat. Should you do this, tempo squats are a great addition to your main squat block or squat program and can be factored in either later in the week or at the start of the week. Ego, I was that gym bro in the younger days and I put far too much load on. So if you fit into this category of, okay, your ego's a bit too much right now and the weight's just too heavy, then great. Take some load off, focus on a tempo squat, a pause squat, really nail the technique down. I always say to my clients every single time if they're wanting to squat heavy, I'll always say to them, what you will lift will never impress me. I've seen some monstrous squats. It will never impress me. However, how you squat it and how it looks and what cues you use to execute that beautifully, that will impress me. The progression that you grow with, that will impress me. I say it every time and it's true. So if you have one of these mistakes in your squat, or if you have one that I've not mentioned, then feel free to drop a comment below. I'll be sure to help. If you're a powerlifter, keep watching. I'm gonna go through red lights, what they mean, fairly cards and techniques in a future video. However, if you enjoyed today, pop us a like, click the bell, and stay strong, and I'll see you next time. Bye.